Hello and welcome to the video. In this video I'll be talking everything Black IPA, otherwise known as the Cascadian Dark Ale, which is also shortened to CDA. In my usual beer style guide format I will begin with the history before then moving on to BJCP notes for competition. I will then teach recipe writing to this style before sharing and explaining one of my own tried and tested recipes, along with recent brew day footage. After this I will share some recent images of the end beer, along with tasted notes. So let's get started with a little history. The Black IPA is a pretty new style, or so you may think as it started showing up under its kept name in 2010. At the start of the style classification there was much discussion around its naming. IBA was a suggestion along with Cascadian, but the American Brewers Association went with American style India Black Ale. The BJCP named it Black IPA under their Speciality IPA section. There was certainly much angry debate about this at the time, and on some forums it was all out war. Some to this day still call it IBA or CDA. The choice is yours, as long as people understand what the name refers to, then I do not really see that it matters. Truth be told, this style in various shapes and forms has had a long and changeable journey in its history. Back in the 1800s, dark hoppy owls were brewed in England and shipped over to India in casks with dry hops for the troops alongside regular IPAs, and were thought to be porters that were receiving the same treatment as pale owl to preserve it for its journey via dry hopping, and it is said that the porters intended for longer travel also received more hops within the boil too. Over time this developed into what the Burton Brewery described as a black pale owl, which is another description that is being seen in modern times too, just to add to the confusion. So really it could be said that this modern black IPA is more of a rebirth of something old after all. Shown on screen now are some good commercial examples of the style that have gained popularity that you may wish to try if this is a beer style that you have no experience of just yet. There are many more great examples out there also, of course. Let us now move on to how the BJCP view this beer style. The idea behind this section is that it will put you in a good position for understanding the style itself, and also where you need to be for competition. I will give a simplified version of the style guide now, starting with aroma. A moderate to high hop aroma, typically with stone fruit, tropical, citrusy, resinous, piney berry or melon character. Low to moderate dark malt aroma, often including light chocolate, coffee or toasted notes. A little clean or light caramel malty sweetness may be found in the background. Fruitiness from hops may also be detected in some versions. Appearance. Colour ranges from dark brown to black. Good head stand with light tan to tan colour that stays down the glass. Flavour. Medium low to high hop flavour. Medium high to very high hop bitterness. The baseball flavour is usually clean and of low to medium intensity and can optionally have low caramelised flavours added in. Dark malt flavour should be low to medium low. Restrained chocolate or coffee flavours may be present. Dry to slightly off dry finish. The bitterness may linger into the aftertaste but should not be harsh. Mouthfeel. Smooth, medium light to medium bodied mouthful. Medium carbonation. A little bit of creaminess may be present but is not required. This leads to the following overall impression. A dry, hop forward style with quite often similar flavour characteristics to a light American IPA. The flavour of darker malts is gentle and supportive and not a major flavour component. Drinkability is a key characteristic. Across the bottom of the screen I have now added the style's vital statistics, and rather importantly on the right hand side a guideline to minimum and maximum BUGU ratios. This screen is now complete in terms of information, so if you are one of my viewers that likes to take a screenshot for future use then go ahead. Before moving on I feel that it has to be said that these BJCP guidelines really apply mostly to those entering for competition, where these guidelines apply and your beer will be judged on how close you are to them. You will notice that this style and others that have commercial examples are not always within the guidelines, but do offer a great beer experience. So overall I suggest that you use BJCP guidelines as advisory only, and do not let them become a restriction to your own recipe writing, as not everything needs to be set in iron, especially your own home brew. 
Here is a recommended water profile for this style that is widely used in commercial breweries. It should be understood that such a profile is useful for creating balance in this style, especially when it comes to bitterness levels. If you would like to reduce the astringency from the dark malt fervor, then you can simply add the dark grain late in the mash rather than having it in for the full mash. Adding it at 15 minutes till the end of the mash will work nicely, but you may notice a reduction in potential color. I will now move through suggestions on how to write recipes to this style, starting with the grain. The main fermentable for black IPA is usually going to be Pale Owl, and this is generally going to be used for this style at a rate of 70% plus. Your main fermentable is a canvas to which you can build flavour, but for a little extra cost it can offer more. As a general guide, if you are looking for some extra biscuit flavour in the background, with a little extra sweetness, then Morris Otter or similar is worth looking at. But you will find that this can dampen hop aroma a little compared to parallel malt. Munich malt is often added to the grain bill of this style to add some maltiness at between 5-15%. to 15%. Take note that using more than 20% alongside American sea hops like Cascade, Centennial and Chinook, for example, does not work well for many people's taste. Caramunic is also a common ingredient in the black IPA grain bill. I would suggest that if you use this crystal version alongside normal Munich, then you should stay within 15% combined, with the Caramunic being up to 5% of this. The darker you go on Caramunic grain, the more toasty it gets, so if you want to stay within the style guidelines, then go with the lighter versions to avoid things moving out of style. The Caramunic will also add in some nice toffee and caramel flavours, which can get more pronounced on the darker versions, so another thing to keep in mind. Another grain that has become popular to use for this style is rye. Some say this imparts a spicy flavour, but I find this to be completely wrong in description for my taste buds. I believe the best description is complex bite and sharpness with an interesting mouthfeel. Used at between 1-3% to in this style, I feel you will be safe. Having said that, if you go much past this, then the flavours will take over the beer, and thus the style. Another good tip is to buy huskless rye to reduce the astringency to keep this in style. Wheat malt is another style component choice that is popular. Again, I would suggest that this is used to add in another background flavour at between 3-5%. to This can be regular wheat malt or a crystal version. The trick with this style is not to add too many flavour malts, with 3-4 to four in small amounts being the high end. Let us not forget that the style this is still a beer about hops, first and foremost. But it does depend on your plans for the end beer of course. Naturally, this being a dark style, you will need some more grain to add in more colour. You should try not to do this with one single grain. For most recipes, this will be a combination of two different types. A popular choice is chocolate malt, at between 4-6%. to But again, using a huskless type like Wyoming's Carafa Special to reduce astringency for this style is very much advised. This will impart chocolate and coffee as background alongside the colour. Regular crystal malt is also another popular choice for this style. Some will use a little of a low EBC crystal for head retention along with some slightly sweet notes, and a little of a higher EBC crystal for actual colour. A range of between 3-7% to would be my suggestion, with a 5% maximum of any one type. And finally we have black malt. I have to say that this is not a malt that I would use for this style personally, but as long as you keep it in the range of 1-2% to it can be useful for adding colour. Going further with it will result in roasted notes and this can break the style and subdue the hops. I only mention it as I have noticed that certain breweries have used it for the style with reasonable results. Ok, let's now move on to the hops. Personally I find that more citrus hops work best in this style rather than the fruity ones. Cascade Centennial, Chinook, Northern Brewer and Simcoe are my best suggestions, as they seem to be the ones that most people enjoy in the style, and they contribute the right flavours for the style according to the BJCP also. Other popular hops are also Citra, Mosaic and Comet. Special note should also be taken that hops with great pine elements in particular like Northern Brewer and Chinook work really well with the dark malt side of this style. In terms of addition times these are very similar to regular classic IPAs. With additions for bittering at the start of the boil and then hops going on from 15 minutes down to flame out 0 minute additions and then dry hops. Let us now look at yeast. 
When it comes to liquid yeast, White Lab's WLP013 London Ale has a lot of fans for this style, as it creates some fruity esters but allows the hops to move forward also. Y Yeast 1332 is also a popular choice as it also allows the black IPA elements to shine and is one of the classic US brewery strains. Dry yeast wise by far the most popular choice is Fermentis US05 with its neutral profile and dry finish but Fermentis SO4 with its English ester characteristics also wins some hearts. Quick yeast wise Vosjana's Quake will fit the neutral profile whereas Quake like Framgarden will fit the ester profile well. Naturally, within all three of these categories there are other choices, so ultimately find what fits best for the style and yourself using these examples as guidelines. Yeast will certainly add its own signature to any beer, but as I see it as a recipe writer it is important that you add your own signature also. This section is now complete, so feel free to take a screenshot for future reference here. Let's now move on to my tried and tested recipe to this style. As always the recipe I'm sharing here is nothing new to me and has seen various tweaks over the years. I brewed this recipe recently using the new Grainfather G70, but the recipe will suit other brewing systems of course. I am sharing this recipe in full in this video's description and also via Brewfather, which can be found via my net link or by searching on the Brewfather cloud. Despite this being a Grainfather recipe, I see no value in sharing it on the Grainfather platform because it is simply too inaccurate in its current state, as shown in my Grainfather G70 first brew experience video. This recipe was written using Brewfather to ensure accuracy and is shared in its original 30 litre form, but it can be easily scaled to another volume using Brewfather to suit your brewing system and the desired volume. Shown on the left hand side of the screen now are the vital statistics and grain bill of this recipe. As you can see in the mash here this is a very dark brown right now, but later on you will see in a glass that it is certainly black like a stout. I added all of my dark grain in for the full mash because I enjoy the flavour edge that this gives, but you may decide to reduce the chance of more bitter flavours by adding the dark grain late in the mash. An acceptable time to do this is in the last 15 minutes. You will note from my recipe that my darkest grain, the carafa, is at 5%. At one point of this recipe's evolution I had this at just 4%, and it would be fair to say that this allowed the hops to come forward further than having it at 5%, but in blind tasting tests more people actually preferred the 5% version, so it stayed. However, this does put this recipe on the edge of BJCP's requirements for the style though, so make your own choices here about going 5% rather than 4%. Also keep in mind that if you ferment this one under pressure, then it will lock in the hop aroma and flavour further, which will balance it back towards the style anyway. Onto the boil additions now as shown on the right hand side of the screen. You can see that my 60 minute bittering hop is Chinook. I feel that Chinook works very well for IPA bittering. It has a sharper and brighter bite to it than many hops that supports this style well, and for this reason it is a popular choice for breweries as well as home brewers for IPA styles in general. The Zero Minute or Whirlpool hops are both Mount Hood and Centennial. I find the two of these together at this time are ideal for this style. Centennial brings its classic super citrus quality and uniquely pungent flavour, which is balanced nicely by the noble qualities of Mount Hood on top of the background malt flavours from this recipe. The dry hop choices offer a twist on this by using Centennial and Northern Brewer. This produces a combined aromatic of citrus, floral and pine with slightly woody elements, the ideal finishing touch to this style, I feel. And finally I use Vosqueg yeast, which will give this a nice neutral breathing space so that the flavours of the hops and malt can sing along with a not so very dry finish that I prefer in black IPAs. This type of cake is now available from Lollamond in dry sachet form as shown, and should be now available in most countries of the world. Failing this, this yeast is also available from various other yeast companies in liquid form too. Alternatively, use a yeast of your choice using the recipe writing section of this video as a guide. Here is the end beer produced by this most recent brew. It certainly looks the part, but sadly the end result of this particular beer has been skewed due to the boiling issues with the Grainfather G70 during this brew. It's still a nice beer, just different. So what I would do instead is tell you of how this has tasted in previous brews so you know what to expect of your own. 
First of all, you will detect an aroma that is citrus, floral and pine on the nose, and sometimes some woody notes, though this is very, very slight. This is a particularly hoppy beer with lots of citrus and tropical flavours in front of the malt background that gives coffee, chocolate and caramel. There is certainly never any astringency and I usually have a clean neutral yeast profile that brings everything forward further. The end result is a Moorish easy drinking example of the style that is packed with flavour. Naturally you could brew this example first, or if you are very familiar with the style use the recipe writing guide section of this video as the tool to write your own recipe with confidence. Be sure to let me know about the results you obtain and feel assured that I can offer further help if needed. This help can be obtained by using the comments section of this video or by posting in this channel's Facebook group. If you are not a member already then use the link shown on screen to guide you to becoming one. It is a busy group with a friendly and helpful user base. This now brings this video to a close. If you have any questions then please let me know via YouTube or Facebook. I do hope that you found this video to be useful, interesting and enjoyable. If appropriate then please like this video on YouTube and if you've not done so already then please subscribe. I regularly post new content. Happy brewing!